multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. I told you on adding and subtracting that after you master that it gets easier with multiplying and dividing and you'll see that multiplying is the easiest of the four operations. You should already know that when you hear the phrase of, it means to multiply. So we're going to use what we know about of and finding maybe half of something to prove the rule for multiplying with fractions. So if I ask you what the half of 24 is, you would easily say that's 12. Or I could even ask you two-thirds of 24 and you would know it's 16 because you can take 24, split it up into three groups. There would be eight in each group. And two of those thirds, two of those eights would make 16. So it makes sense that two thirds of 24 is 16. Let's see how this applies to actual multiplication. One half times 24. When you're, when you're multiplying with a fraction, put it over one. And if you multiply across, you get 24 over two which makes 12. Likewise, with 2 over 3, multiply across. 2 times 24 is 48. 48 divided by 3 is 16. That basically is how to multiply fractions. Now let's get an exact how-to with step-by-step -step directions. First, you're going to make the number into a fraction. Make it fraction friendly. So if we're dealing with whole numbers, you're going to put that over 1. With a mixed number, you're going to turn it into an improper fraction, which means you multiply the denominator times the whole number and then add the numerator. So 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. Okay? Okay. Second step is optional. You don't have to do this. However, I recommend it because it's a lot easier when you're dealing with smaller numbers. You can cross simplify, which means look diagonally and see if there are common factors. If you look at 8 and 4, you see that 4 is a common factor, and I can reduce 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I have cross simplified. Then I'm going to multiply across. 2 times 11 is 22 over 1. And then I had a negative times a positive. Don't forget your integer rules is a negative. Step 4, I'm going to simplify and I get negative 22. Now as you saw with adding and subtracting fractions, simplifying has two parts to it. One, that you turn any improper fractions into either a whole number or a mixed number. And second part of simplifying is reducing. You'll have to reduce if you did not do step two, the cross simplifying. And I will show you that in green. How about that? Probably should have had that marker ready. If I had not have cross simplified, I would have got that marker's awful, isn't it? Let's throw that one away. Let's try this one. Eight times 11. Oh, that one's awful too. 88. Mm, that's a little better. Okay, 8 times 11 is 88. 1 times 4 is 4. It still would have been negative, and then that would have reduced also to negative 22. Okay, practice. Go ahead and pause the video and then restart it once you have attempted these problems.
a, you can see where I cross, I'm sorry, I cross simplified. And then when I multiply across, I get one half. The fives go down to ones, the four and the eight break down by fours to be one and two, multiply across, one half. On practice B, turn the mixed number into an improper fraction. So you can see what I did there of 31 over seven because seven times four is 28, 21 plus three, Sorry, 28 plus 3 is 31, and it stays negative. 5 over 6. I look diagonally, and nothing is going to cross-simplify, which is kind of disappointing because those are some big numbers. I get negative 155 over 42. You can see where I kind of estimated. Maybe it goes in there about three times because I thought 42, kind of close to 50, and I counted by 50s. That gets 126, so that's, it goes in there three whole times, and then I got to figure out the fraction part. So I subtracted the 126 minus 155, and got a remainder of 29. So it's negative 3, 29 over 42. It's negative because I had a negative times a positive. In practice C, again, you got to turn that improper fraction in, I'm sorry, that mixed number into the improper fraction. And I got the reciprocals of each other, which is a word that you're going to see next lesson in dividing fractions. 8 over 9 times 9 over 8. All four corners are going to cancel out to 1's. It's a negative times a negative, so I have positive 1 over 1, which simplifies to be 1. Practice D, you kind of had to think a little bit more for this. I want to know what would be the denominator to get 1 fourth. The strategy that I use is, I obviously 1 over 4 is the simplified part. 5 times 3 would have been 15, and so I ask myself, 15 is a fourth of what? 15 over 60 is um, what it would reduce down to 1 fourth. So then I ask myself again, 6 times what gives me 60, which is 10. So in that question mark or in that box, you should have had 10.